What's well, so beautiful people? So, how are you all? Um, thank you so much, everyone, for all of your beautiful comments about the collaboration I did with Cindy from Awakening to Spirit. Um, you know, your comments are absolutely beautiful. Cindy and I had a fabulous time all day talking and then doing the reading. Um, I haven't had time because I've moved to answer your comments to my last two videos, but I will <clears throat> settle in and do that today. I thought it was easier to do a little reading. I've moved to a mango orchard. <laughs> I have to point that way. But um, actually, no, I need to turn so that you can see a mango tree. I mean, that might be a mango tree, but this here is one of the mango trees and I'm going to be looking at them because the way in which they grow and produce fruits is quite fascinating. It is the jungle and there's a lot of creatures here that just want to hurt you. <laughs> so there are scorpions. Um, here so you have to be careful as you walk put shoes and things on and uh it's kind of it's slightly amusing me in that i feel like i've arrived somewhere to deal with my first house of the self as the next part of my own process of growing changing because obviously i'm scorpio rising and it's really uh it's just, it's, it's fascinating to move into a space that's once again making me sweat, cleansing, purifying. Um, but it's about facing the dangers of the self. So for me, I have Venus, Mercury, Ceres and Neptune all in Scorpio. So I'm fascinated to see what's coming today. As soon as I finish this video, my very kind hosts who own the farm, they are going to take me to the beach so that I can actually go in the sea and be with Neptune. So, Neptune's bells. Oh, I'm dripping already. So, welcome to the tropics. Such, such beautiful clarity to that sound. Stability. Um, I want to say wealth and prosperity was a sound that was resonating out. It's um, calm. There was great calm. I mean, I don't feel... I feel calm. But I am curious as to what is coming. What is coming. So I've got... Odinson and the Nine Realms. And I don't know, I'm not asking anything. I don't know whether the cards will be talking to you, me, all of us, what they'll be doing. I'm literally going to let cards fall for this short message and just see what gives. I'm back on the pop, as in... <laughs> I've fallen off the wagon, I'm drinking just water again. Um, I had a coffee this morning, and do you know, I, I felt stressed by drinking coffee, and I love coffee. I've got a little travel grinder that I take everywhere with me, but today, I, I suspect changes are afoot. Anyway, I don't know until I embrace the energies of a place. I'm excited to go and see Neptune. So, Odinson and the Nine Realms. Odinson and the Nine Realms. Ooh. 
what messages do you have for us? What messages do you have for us? So we've got one down, one up. The one down came out first. The one up came out second, and that's Heimdale. So something before... Oh, Scardy and Heimdale. That, it's interesting. <laughs> Immediately, Scardy came down from the mountain that she loved to uh, seek a husband. It all went wrong, and she ended up with Njord, who was in love with the sea, she tried living with him. He went up the mountain. Neither way worked. It's like... Uh, it, the, the cards are just saying it's like an announcement that I've come down the mountain. <laughs> it didn't work, being up the mountain. And look, in many ways, it did and it didn't. There was a cloud of unknowing up that mountain where you just couldn't know um, flies have appeared. I haven't seen flies for months. Flies and ants. Sat down with my coffee this morning, got covered in ants. And my coffee cup was calling in ants. I mean, this is a jungle and it's alive. And I've just got to adapt to it. So the cloud of unknowing came down the mountain and as I was coming down the mountain, it takes 90 minutes to get down the mountain. It's such a long, high pathway down the road. And even as coming out and the, the warm air started to arrive, at first I was like, oh, hurrah, warm air. You know, because at night up the mountain, it's cold. Um, and I was like, oh, it's so lovely to feel warm air. And as we got further and further down till we actually reached Tuxla and got into the city and it was like 33 degrees of humidity, suddenly there was this energy of like immense heat caught in the surface of my chest trying to get out and I was like ooh <laughs> maybe I've made a mistake <laughs> coming down the mountain but look I'm getting a fanfare for coming down the mountain so I've got the rune deck here to go with the runes and I've just been speaking to Olga who's just been to visit Peru and returned to Portugal so I felt runes were the order of the day. The sap is rising and egg is shamir. It's interesting because Reem did a lovely reading yesterday with the runes. Oh, and they were just singing to her, but she had egg shamir. So my lovely rune deck. What do you want to say about Scardy and Heimdall? I feel like uh, Heimdall's not telling her she's doing good. Heimdall's telling someone else she's doing good. But she's coming down with air frequency. She's coming down with determination. And she's coming down in her snowshoes. And she's walking on the grass in her snowshoes. It's like there's a fear of tripping up. But she won't trip up. She's got her snowshoes on. Goddess of the snowshoes. Oh my goodness. That card nearly went in with a big glass of water. Because water's so important here. So I've got three cards. I need a sip of water. I'm so parched. So there's one card that's fallen on Heimdall and Scardy. <laughs> I was going to say, what's crossing you? Hang through. Review. It's time for me to review something about my journey. And I think uh, seven and five, you see it's a 12. It's 12 frequency. It's Odinson, Odin, hanging on the Idrisil tree. It's like a pause, uh, a moment now. I know, uh, yeah, in very many ways, look, we're in month 12 and we've had the solar eclipse. We've had all those shadows come up that we've been looking at. And now it's time to just pause. Just let the energy of the year pass by and just witness it. You know what we need to keep a lookout for while we're here? 
um, are the parakeets. There's some really amazing different birds. They have hummingbirds too. But I feel the energy that we're most <laughs> being aware of is scorpions. Um, we have 15 elks protection. And there is that sense that time, spirit, and everything is lending us a sense of protection. Because we've got to play out the energies to the end of the year. Things won't change. Um, well, they will change, but they won't change dramatically at the moment for us. The shift somehow happens when we move into the year next year, six, the five and one, because it's 2022. So I've got here next witchcraft, the wicker craft, sorcery, elder tree, elder the protector. Um, from the point of view of me, I just need to dab a little bit of uh, the sun's chasing me. I wasn't in the sun earlier, but it's it's rising over the roof. It's trying to get to me. Um, and I'm trying not to go in the sun too much because obviously I'm going to the beach today and I don't want to OD on the sun. So the elder, when I was up the cloud of unknowing, there were elder trees and they surprised me because they were kind of blooming with their flowers, which in the UK would be in April. And so there was something about the seasons being out of joint, time being out of joint, not necessarily for their region, but just in terms of my presence in that frequency. So there's some kind of new magic that's being created. And we have Sigil. Life Force, the sun. Oh, this is interesting. If you look at the numbers... There's a kind of... The witchcraft is reversing something in the middle. Because we've got one five, six five, one six. I'm sure if I put them this way round, you'd see what I mean. Would we? Let me just look. Yeah, one six six five one five. One six six five one five. There's something about this last moment of this year that's creating a kind of magical mirror transformation i have to push that back a weenie bit hold your horses mind your ears it's going to go boom, 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 boom. i need to just move you and this little table back a bit sorry i need to it's heavier at that end but i need to just I need to keep myself out of that sun. So, what else can we expect then? What else can we expect? What else can we expect? Let's give them a rifle. I have got the Alchemy of Astrology deck, but I feel like this is just a rune day. Yeah, the total numbering of the cards that came out, the three, adds up to an eight, I think. So that's a uh, change. But an abundant change. One moment before a form of divinity. A divine moment. So we've got Ing. The pause before a creation. The moment of creating a kind of new philosophical mission to move forwards, the wisdom that you wait for is within. Uh, so Odin's story is all about how the runes were gifted to him. But the runes are, as I've always said, the runes are inside us. But Anne's calling up my legs now as well. I kind of half expected her. So we've got Ing, Water Meadow, uh, and this is coming across as that notion of rewriting your philosophical mission. 
you've got to create a, a purpose forwards into next year and that's why we're hanging upside down the runes are within you they're in they're the seeds that you've been planting throughout the last two years so you have to oh two years twos it's all this energy of twos coming along um and we have ran goddess of the ocean bed so there's something about her she has this net sometimes she shakes the net as if she's going to throw it to capture something sometimes she's throwing the net to let things fall from it today i'm getting the energy of both of those frequencies there's things in this period while you're in the hang through while you're hangman frequency odin hanging from the yggdrasil tree there are things you need to let go of there are things that in the dark of the dark as we head towards december solstice i know southern hemisphere it's your uh it's your summer solstice um but i think that you're dealing in a slightly different frequency of connecting with like leo's readings recently have been about sitting in the light and waiting for the shadows to invade because you need to connect with the shadows um whereas i think for the people in the northern hemisphere who are waiting on a winter solstice there's something about the you know the ride of the ancestors not the valkyrie but the ride of the ancestors the, the shadows that need to return and be shed they're almost like your ancestors frequencies are almost like baubles on hanging on a christmas tree things that you regularly take out um you know items that you've had for many years things that bring you comfort to see um and when i gave away my uh, all the contents of my house i had my tree and i had all my baubles that i loved some really beautiful things and in the end i gave them to some friends um because they didn't have christmas decorations and actually they threw them all away and at first i was really kind of i was bereft by their absence but there's something about tradition we have to break traditions if we cannot break traditions we're always going to feel feel ill at ease with our journey forwards and it is a really difficult one because you know as i said before i love christmas i love those moments of it being something that wherever you are it regularly happens and yet last year i don't know in many countries but in britain i wasn't there but you know the pandemic really messed up christmas for a lot of people um and i spent christmas in portugal because i was still not allowed in to see my mother and uh, my father just wasn't up for christmas so i did it alone this year i've come to this farm just so that i don't have to be totally alone i have to uh, you know can join the family here so ants get off me ankles let's have some runes on the water meadow it's like there's something to do with fresh water salt water the mixing of a fresh water with the salt water the salt water being the the akashic memory and how new uh, purified clean source energy water needs to come it like it's like ah oh, it's like temperance to temper is to weaken the wine and we are in sagittarius season you're tempering the emotions you're weakening the strength of tradition it's interesting because the first message i ever got about tradition was a couple of years ago at christmas and it said you've got to prepare yourself to do christmas differently you've got to throw traditions to the wind oh somehow extra cards have come out there 
Oh, and there's one, that's so interesting. There's a whole kind of lineup. There's one I never picked up. What is it? That's exactly it. You've got to pull apart the anchored mortar. You've got to pull apart all of the energies of traditions. This period, you've got to just hang true to the notion that something new and better is knocking at the door trying to get in. It's interesting because now in my head, I'm very excited because I have a, I have a favourite Christmas playlist. And I like to bake Christmas foods all the way through Advent. And I can't do that because many of the ingredients I want, I can't get hold of because they're much more, I don't know, European sold products, I guess. So I have to do away with that. But maybe a lot of my playlist is Puerto Rican Christmas music. And I've been very excited to play my Puerto Rican Christmas music in Mexico where it feels part of the Hispanic heritage and there's something in my head saying you've got to do without your Christmas list you've got to not hear the familiar I don't want to do that it's like one peg too far right so what was the first card that actually fell thorn portal i feel like the portal is in capricorn there's something about the energy of this portal the black thorn that is the mystical magical opening to the other place um is a it's a dark energy it's an energy of fear of bleeding through the thorns because they're the thorns on a black thorn are evil oh and that's what he also said here that's why you need to wear shoes and not flip-flops there's things in the ground that are so thorny that they hurt now that was very similar to when i was in lavra or lavre in portugal you couldn't walk in flip-flops because the whole of the underneath of your flip-flops uh drew in really prickly dangerous and it hurt it really did hurt so maybe that's just a message to remind me that you can survive it though now we've got the last two cards of the deck of the rune deck but they came in the reverse oh, yeah in the reverse order so 77 is the last card Hemfereld, the ham home fereld journey so this is the journey home the bilros the bifrost who calls in the bifrost there it is heimdale so there's something about a homeward journey this christmas but journeying where from hell into the light because we're ending with hell hell the goddess returning light and she's 13. it's interesting i was talking with reem last night and i was talking about how i always talk about 12 frequency 13 frequency and i did a birthday reading for her a year ago because it's nearly her birthday again now and uh in the reading for the first time i mentioned 14 frequency and we've got that 14 frequency here this portal is going to open it's almost like it's almost uh, yeah i'm always saying you have to engage in the work and and yeah I, the energy i'm receiving from this is this portal is opening it's opened it's coming and it's how still oh how still you want to hang how still do you want to review your philosophical mission forwards or you're going to get pricked it's going to hurt it's how easy do you want to make the journey for yourself the portal is coming for everyone i never say that because i always say you have to do the work but what i'm saying is is 
you will do the work because it's coming to hurt and prick us all to make us kind of face energies that we have to face shadows we have to face to return to the light that's coming as we move into 2022 so we have two cards one face down 2022 it's a divine nine it's a beginning begin Björk, poplar tree it's like after you burn and decimate the forest with fire the first thing that grows is the birch tree and that's what that symbol represents but when it's a poplar tree i know it's spelt different but there's something about the poplar tree that's the energy of community that's the energy of the population the energy of everybody's tree being given a chance to regrow having been singed and then we have two more cards leaf leaf this is 11 this is the the new extending energy it's like the nutrients inside the earth are about to shift and bring us a new frequency so the poplar tree will extend to the populace ah oh, it's the energy of us returning from our individual bubbles that's what this portal is we're already in it we're already in in the ing water meadow portal that's what this witchcraft is it's 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 bringing down an energy striking us while we've been protected to pop the bubble so that we can all move back into reality together and then we have it ends with the present gateway onwardness we're moving onward verzandi verzandi one of the norms clearing the pathway it's like this all of the briars that were blocking the future will be reopened so let's just have a couple more gonna have to shift again come with me people had to wear me short shorts today people because it's so hot I need a little dabbing so I'm dribbling all over my cloth here but I had to put a cloth down because the table wouldn't let the cards back up so what's the final message today not for the whole year but today's message what's the final message today what's the final message today right tiwas tear tear is to smelt tear is an old god who was supplanted by odinson odin um tear was the original proto-germanic deity who was kind of god of gods and he's still present in the Norse stories, Tyr. And it's interesting that he's part of a... He's an energy that understands how to let go of things, how to love things, how to be compassionate. He kind of... Although he's seen as a young god in Norse mythology, his wisdom is much older. He's been around creating understanding that's far in advance of the patience that odin has to receive all the information he's got it all he this guy has smelted melted changed transformed so many times there ain't no shit you can't tell tear and yet still he doesn't divulge the truth to odin odin's not even aware somehow of just who Tyr really is. And Hagal. Weathering. He has weathered everything. There's no false prophecy. There's no spiritual egotism. There's just knowledge, understanding, transformation 
humbleness. That's this energy that I'm getting. We've got to shift our philosophical mission. We've got to shift it. We've got to make changes to what we believe are our spiritual truths. Because they're not. They're just your current ones. Which I like as a message. Because I'm always shifting mine. You know, these readings, talking with you guys, always helps me shift notions, understand things differently. Right, he's giving me just one card. Emotional bleed. It's leche, leech. This is... This is what I feel they're saying. Odin didn't finish the full emotional bleed. There was an impatience. Temperance. Going back to temperance. This is the time, as we end this year, to have patience that we are being presented with new frequencies. But you've got to wait for them. You've also, it's just reminded me to say, you've got to unpick all that mortars you. You've got to almost... Be shaken free from the old emotions of Ran. You've got to allow the Bilrost, sort of the Bilrost is coming across as kind of a glittering home journey to the sacral, to the seat of your soul, where you're purifying all the energies so that you can bring brand new um, seeds to grow new shoots are forming look inside the seed is a new you at the moment we're up here we haven't worked out our philosophical mission everything's cloudy spend this time working out how you're going to move into the energy of the new year don't listen to any of your traditional beliefs you've got to break free of them you've got to bleed them out you've got to let go of the things that you hold true. Look, now I get it. Now I get why this card is here. How do you get from that to that? You finish bleeding and then you can bring the energy up and you can smelt and change and transform and come into your own sacral with a new inner compass of understanding. And now they're drawing me to this. It's an incomplete compass. She's coming down the mountain to learn the new frequencies, to learn the new pathways, to witness a better journey forwards. And look, you, you, we also need to remember with Skadi is Skadi's energy was about being tricked. She was tricked. She was on her own spiritual path, and yet the gods tricked her. The gods abused her, the gods didn't give her the choice of the one she loved. They made her pick her lover by looking only at the feet of several gods. And she picked the wrong one. She should have been able to be... She should have been able to say to them, No, I'm having him. You promised me that I could have the man that I was in love with. I'm not picking him by feet. She wouldn't make that mistake again. But that's this thing of... You, you, you can't really trust the prophecies or the, or the proverbs or the, the practices, the philosophies of others unless you test those philosophies in your own sacral, not theirs. It's like swimming in someone else's philosophical pool, sacred pool. You need your own. You need to clean up your own sacred understanding. Write your own philosophical mission. So, I just want to have one last card. If it will give me one last card. What's on the bottom? There we go. The Norns. That'll do. Destiny. There is a destiny for the world and for each of us. And it is coming in, but to make it hurt less so that you can truly bleed and transform, 
you have to be temp you have to show temperance you have to temper the wine you mustn't feel so headstrong you mustn't feel so e egotistical you mustn't imagine that your spiritual journey is any better or sharper or cleverer than anyone else's and there is i'm just being your journey not someone else's you know you don't want to be going into she was tricked by patriarchy and and that's an abuse as well so in your own philosophical mission don't fall into notions of patriarchy offering you gifts of spirituality find your own gifts write your own gifts and don't allow anyone to tell you that how you feel is incorrect because it suits your philosophical mission if you've taken the time to think what is your philosophical mission and avoid messiah complex okay so beautiful people i will get round to writing back to you all for the lovely comments as i said on the video i did with cindy we had a blast and uh, i'm glad to be here i haven't yet worked out where it's going to be sensible to sit but this place does have some amazing features let me just show you the style of the architecture here so i'm gonna probably go up into these spaces to do readings because i've always wanted to live briefly and experience what it's like to live in a building where there are no straight edges and actually acoustically from a sound healing point of view they wrap you up round curvy rooms uh they're like wombs they're like little acoustic sound wombs it's it's absolutely fascinating so we'll explore more in the days to come i'm going to go and uh, change out of this wet t-shirt <laughs> We're back on that one again and uh and go to the beach and have a swim with neptune because i haven't had a swim maybe ran will be there i haven't had a swim now for months and i really need to get into the salt and release all the energies that the chiropractor was knocking out of me so what say beautiful people?